always wanted to learn how to add a bevel and emboss effect inside of Photoshop, but never knew exactly where to start. Well, if that's the case, then you're in luck since in this video I'm going to walk you through the entire process and show you how easy it is to do so. I'm Andrew and you're watching an Envato Task Plus tutorial. So what does the bevel and emboss layer style effect do? Well, it allows you to add depth to a layer by using highlights and shadows in order to give it a three-dimensional look. We can apply the effect on anything from a photo to a basic shape or even a text segment, the process itself being really simple as you will see in the following moments. For example purposes, let's say that we have a basic shape to which we want to add a bevel and emboss effect to. We're going to start by heading over to the Layers panel and then selecting the layer containing our shape. Once the layer is selected, we're going to head over to the panel's bottom section and click on the FX button, which will open up a list of all the available layer styles that we can use. Here we'll want to click on Bevel and Emboss, which will immediately bring up the layer style window. We can achieve the same result by double clicking on the layer itself and then checking the effect from within the style's left-sided panel or by heading over to Layer, Layer Style, Bevel and Emboss. Once the Layer Style window is visible, we can easily access all the different available settings and options which are divided into two separate sections, the top one being Structure. The first option that we'll see here is Style, which allows us to choose the style or rather location of our bevel. Now, the top two options are pretty self-explanatory. We then have Emboss, which applies the bevel to both the outside and the inside of the shape, and Pillow Emboss, which does the same thing but in opposite directions. The last style option is Stroke Emboss, which only works on strokes. Moving on down, we have Technique, which allows us to define the overall look of the bevel and emboss effect. Smooth creates a soft rounded edge bevel, while the chisel options give it a harder or softer carved look. We then have Depth, which lets us increase or decrease the apparent depth of the effect, and Direction, which allows us to decide whether we want the bevel to appear to be extruded towards us or away from us. Next, there's Size, which controls the overall size of the effect, where a lower value keeps the effect closer to the shape's edges, while a larger one pushes it towards its center. Lastly, we have Soften, which allows us to smooth on now the edges created by the bevel and emboss. Moving on to the second section of our settings, we have Angle and Altitude, which allows us to adjust the position of our light source where the angle controls the horizontal, while the altitude the vertical. We then have Glass Contour, which allows us to control the falloff of both our shadows and highlights in a nonlinear manner by giving us multiple curve profiles. Finally, we can control the blending mode, color, and opacity for both our highlights and shadows, which we will need to adjust depending on the layer's content. Compared to the other layer styles, the bevel and emboss one comes with a subset of options which can be enabled from within the style's left-sided panel. The first one is Contour and allows us to define the overall shape of our bevel using one of its different curve profiles. While the rain slider allows us to set the overall coverage of the bevel itself. The second subsetting is Texture, and as the name implies, allows us to add texture to our effect using patterns, giving us the option of adjusting the scale and depth of the pattern itself. If we want to, we can always save the current effect settings by using the Make Default button, or we can fully reset them using the Reset to Default one. Once we're done adjusting all the different settings, we can hit OK, and the layer panel will update itself by displaying a little FX icon next to the corresponding layer. If needed, we can easily adjust the effect at any time by simply double-clicking on it and then fine-tuning it accordingly. 
And that's pretty much all you have to do. As always, I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one.